Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Installation Lab. This is a 1994 Nissan 300ZX. It's got a few miles on it, the clutch is still drivable, but the pedal effort, the force you have to push on the pedal, it's getting to be a little bit hard. So I think this is a good indicator that this clutch is approaching its worn out stage. So as a training exercise, we're going to go ahead and install a clutch in this Nissan 300ZX. Well, we've got a V6 rear wheel drive. This will be a first for me working on this uh, layout. So, again, somewhere back there, there's a transmission and a clutch. We'll go find it. Well, the transmission's about ready to come out. We did have to disconnect and remove a few things. Started with the battery cable, then there was a body bracket, the exhaust system, the heat shield, drive shaft, the shifter had to be removed. There were transmission electrical connections on the passenger side, starter, slave cylinder, transmission cross member. Now it's time to start working on those bolts for the transmission. All right, this is the one we've been looking for, the last bolt for the transmission. I already loosened it up. I'm going to slowly start working the transmission back, lower it just a little bit. Wow! I've got a little flywheel lock up there and I've already cracked the bolts loose, so I'm just going to go around. Now this car is equipped with a pilot bushing instead of a bearing and we'll take a look at that after we get it out. This is a pilot bearing or bushing puller and you tighten the tool against the bushing. It's got some hooks on there. Put the bridge on, tighten the bolt, tighten this, the nut, excuse me, and you pull the bushing out. There it is. The tool has two hooks that go in and expand and the hook gets behind the bushing. You tighten this nut up, locks it in place, and then the outer nut that I was turning pulls it out and neatly pulls the bushing out. Now I took out the bolt that was done at 12 o'clock and put in a pin with the same threads just to hold the flywheel. I don't want that coming down on my foot. There we go. Uh-oh. That looks like a little bit of a leaky rear main, maybe, or uh, oil pan gasket. Now I've got some cleanup work to do. I've got to clean the splines here on the input shaft. They're very gummy. That disc was probably not sliding very freely. Out here where the pilot bushing was sitting, I'm going to clean that up. Make sure we're in good shape there. Clutch release bearing is going to come off. Now we did replace the rear main seal and it's time to put the uh, bushing in. Now, don't laugh, this is going to be my bushing driver. We actually didn't have a real bushing driver. What I wanted to have was a nice crisp 90 degree shoulder for this fairly thin wall bushing to drive it against. So that's going to hold it, get it in there and use a dead blow hammer. and seat it in the crankshaft. Now, question on tech support. Do you lubricate a pilot bushing? It's a trick question. Three answers. Yes, no, and if you answer yes, the question is what, what do you lubricate it with? The only correct answer is motor oil. If you put grease in here and lubricate that with grease, it will make noise. I've done it. I've been in the field and seen a car or a truck that had a pilot bearing installed that was a, a pilot bushing, excuse me, and they greased it and it makes noise. So either install it 
as it comes out of the package, dry, but it's already got oil in it. Or you can go ahead and put a couple drops of motor oil on the inside of it and a little bit even on the, uh, the nose of the input shaft. So I'll put a couple drops of oil in there before we install the transmission. Now I put a pin in its 12 o'clock position to help hold the flywheel. Gonna hang it on that pin. Get it on the pilot and start the bolts. And each bolt just gets a drop of medium strength thread locking compound. I'll seat all the bolts first, then we'll start the torque procedure. Well, the flywheel bolt torque is 61 to 69 pound feet. I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to start at about 30. And our final torque. We're with 61 to 69 pound feet. Now this is the bearing and fork assembly that I removed from the transmission. So it's a little bit different this time than some of the other bearings we've worked with. I have to remove the bearing from the collar, the carrier right here, and then reassemble it. So there's the new bearing. So I'll press that off and press the new bearing on. But installation points, there's a grease groove in here. Got to make sure that gets cleaned out first and then I'll pack it with fresh wheel bearing grease. Right here, where the fork pushes on the ear, I'll be putting grease there also. Notice there's a retaining clip, I have to put that back in. And there's a little retainer for the ball stud and there'll be some grease under there after it's cleaned up. But here's something that we see infrequently but it does happen with this system. The bearing, this part of the bearing that my two fingers are touching on, that's what touches the diaphragm spring and it rotates with it. But we every so often get one back where they put the bearing on backwards and this part of the bearing winds up facing that way against the collar and this shell or case back here is up against the diaphragm spring. This doesn't rotate so the thing that's not rotating is touching the stuff that rotates and it burns them up. So we got to make sure we don't do that. And this is another Nissan, something like a Sentra and some other vehicles. Again, same scenario. This is the part that's supposed to be up against the diaphragm spring. They put it on the fork backwards, so the fork is pushing, like there where my two fingers are right now, and the diaphragm spring is up here against the non-rotating piece. Burns them up. So let's take this press-on bearing off and press a new one on. We're going to use an arbor press and press the bearing off, so let's go ahead and put the bearing in position. And we're going to use a socket to drive against the collar. Get it lined up underneath the ram. We'll push to get it started. We're going to change sockets and drive it all the way out. We'll just clean up the collar and we'll reassemble. Now we're ready to press on the new bearing. So there you can see the rotating side facing the camera. Go ahead and place it down. Put the collar on. And we'll just seat it in position using the press. The new bearing is pressed on and it turns nice. So we're going to start with the clip. 
make sure I get the clip down in the groove. There we go. A little bit of grease. Just a little bit of high temperature wheel bearing grease where the fork and the collar are going to come together. I don't like heavy clutch pedals as a general rule. There should be enough feedback in that pedal so you can tell what's going on. But it shouldn't be uh, annoying. And a lot of times just a little bit of grease in the correct places means a huge difference in how that pedal feels to the driver. Good. It's got a little bit of grease right there. Next, the pivot ball. This is on the transmission yet. I haven't removed that. So we'll put a Good little dab of grease in that button right there. Pivot ball retaining spring. Hooks in. Push it down. And that locks in. Now, the grease groove. Right in here, we've got a big grease groove. I'm going to take a minute and pack that up with high temperature wheel bearing grease. And that allows the bearing to slide freely on the front of the transmission. And the bore of the collar is now greased. The grease groove is full of grease. So this is ready to install on the transmission. Pivot ball is all cleaned up. Guide tube is clean. The teeth of the input shaft and the shaft where the pilot bearing rides. So a little bit of grease on the pivot ball. Just going to wipe just a little bit on the guide tube. No grease out here. That's oil for the pilot bushing. I'm going to carefully slide the bearing and fork in. And it clipped onto the ball stud retainer. Now I'll clean up that grease. I'll get a little bit more of that out. This position would be released, so you can shift gears, engaged, released, engaged, and as the system wears, the fingertips get higher, the bearing moves back to accommodate for wear. Nice and smooth. And the bearing turns freely. So let me clean that up a little bit and we'll test fit the disc and lubricate the input shaft of the transmission. I always recommend taking the clutch disc while everything is cleaned up with clean hands and slide it on the input shaft. <laughs> Make sure it fits now, not when you're trying to stab that transmission. Alright, now we got to lubricate the spline of the input shaft. We include a small packet of spline grease in the kit. Open it up, spread it around, and you can take the package Use it like a little spreader. You just want to get a film of grease on the input shaft teeth. This is steel. The hub of the disc is steel. So with time, condensation, a little bit of corrosion is uh, the likely outcome there. The corrosion prevents the disc from sliding freely while you're shifting. So then you take the disc again with clean hands. Slide it on. Off, index it, slide it back on, do that a couple times. Notice also that the disc has a flywheel side orientation and we'll be putting this side towards the flywheel. Now we're ready to install the clutch and we're going to start by cleaning the flywheel. Clean shop towels, brake clean. We're going to clean the friction surface. And change the rag a couple times. Get some more brake clean on there. Brake clean, rubbing alcohol, those would be good choices. 
The solvent from your cleaning tank is probably not going to be clean enough. We don't want any residue left behind. I didn't spray the flywheel because I don't want to get any of the brake clean on the pilot bushing because we've got oil in there, remember? Just a couple drops of oil in there as you assemble this, that would be fine. Then repeat this same process on the casting of the pressure plate only. You don't need to clean the whole pressure plate assembly, just that casting surface. Now the clutch disc has an orientation, flywheel side. In this case, it's the flat side goes up here. Generally speaking, the torsion damper almost always goes towards the transmission, but there are some exceptions. So please check the disc as you're installing it, check the disc as you remove it, or call the toll-free tech support hotline. Now this Nissan has one other unique little feature. It's got three dial pins, but it's staggered. There's a small gap here and a bigger gap here and over here. So I'm going to find that small stagger and start with that. And catch it on the pins. Each bolt gets a real small drop of medium strength thread locking compound. And just get the bolts started. Okay, who's asking about the alignment tool? I hope somebody is. As soon as I get a couple bolts started, I'll get the alignment tool and we'll center the disc. As long as I don't have the cover clamped, I can still move the disc around. If you want to put the alignment tool in the disc first, that's fine. That's just your choice. Now the bolts are just started. They're not clamping yet. Use the alignment tool. and pick up the pilot. Kind of wiggle it around, find home, and just snug a couple bolts. Just hand tight for right now, we'll be just fine. Check the pilot. Good. Now the tightening process. Sorry, no air tools. About a half, three quarter turn at a time, in a staggered pattern. So, nine bolts. This will take a minute. Now I pulled down all the bolts by hand. Half, three quarter turn at a time. I'm going to take the alignment tool out. We're done with the alignment tool. Now we're going to torque the bolts, and the bolt torque is 25 to 33 pound-feet. First torque, we're going to take it down in two stages. We're going to go about 20 pounds. 20 pound-feet, excuse me. Final torque, 30.
all torqued. Now if you notice from when we first put the cover on, the fingers started off kind of high pointing towards the transmission. As I bolted it down, they pulled down to their normal operating position. Let's put that transmission in. Now this is the hand operated vacuum pump I'm going to use. So I've attached the hose to the bleed screw. Got a little catch bottle there. I'm going to start applying vacuum. And just drain out all the fluid, try and just keep it a little bit neater. And loosen the line. And this type of fitting is called a banjo bolt fitting. And they have a copper compression washer on each side of that bolt. We'll be putting those back on, the new ones, and we'll bolt it up. To remove the master cylinder, we've got to remove a pin, which has a clip on the end of it, hair clip, and that's up underneath the dashboard. I'm going to disconnect this line. I'm going to use a flare nut wrench again. These flare nut wrenches really work well on these type fittings. It prevents a lot of damage. This is the last nut coming off. The line is disconnected, so let's see if I can get this master cylinder out of here. There it is. New master cylinder. Put the little gasket back on. I'm going to leave it just a little bit loose while I make this connection. I think you should always start these brake line fittings very carefully. Never put a wrench on it until you are sure that you're threaded in correctly. You will cross thread it and that's the end of that. Well, everything is in place. I'm going to go ahead and slug it up. I'm going right back to that flare nut wrench and do the final tightening. Very carefully tighten that down. Make sure we're not cross thread. That's a bad thing. Now I have to connect underneath the firewall. Now the slave cylinder is connected back to the line. There's a copper gasket on both sides of the banjo fitting. That creates the seal. Bleed screw is closed. I did put fluid in the reservoir of the master cylinder. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to start to push the slave cylinder piston in. And it should push air bubbles up and out into the master cylinder. So let's see if that happens. Here we go. Let it extend, and it should start to push bubbles up and fluid down. Travis, anything happening up there? Yes. Are we getting bubbles? Lots of bubbles. Is the fluid level going down? Yes. yes. All right, Josh, go ahead and push the clutch pedal to the floor. And it stayed, I'll bet, right? Yep. Okay, that means we've got a big air bubble in there yet. So while we got a lot of fluid in, we've still got a big air bubble in this system. 
Now we started with pushback bleeding to get some air bubbles out of the system, but because of the routing, the line coming out goes up high on the firewall. I think we've still got a large air bubble in there. And when we push on the clutch pedal the first time, it just stayed to the floor. So we're gonna just try traditional bleeding techniques for right now. Josh, go ahead and push the pedal to the floor. We got nothing. Nothing came out. So there's a big air bubble in this system somewhere. Now we're going to change things a little bit. I'm going to block the slave cylinder from extending by putting this socket behind the slave cylinder. And it's just going to contact the edge of the housing. Now I've instructed Josh just to push till he feels resistance till it stops, but don't bear into it. Then I'm going to open the bleed screw and we're going to get a flushing action from the master cylinder down, I hope. Everybody ready up there? Yes. Josh, yep. push the pedal. Hold. Pedal up. Let's repeat. Push. Hold. Pedal up. What I'm looking to hear from Josh is if the pedal keeps coming up higher and higher. That indicates an improvement. Josh, pedal down. Pedal up. Now I'm up underneath the dashboard and I'm going to try to adjust this and what's going to happen below is as I make the push rod longer, eventually it's going to close off the port in here and they will not be able to compress the slave cylinder. So I'm going to make the push rod a little longer. Josh, compress. Okay, let go. Okay. Compress. Nope. Okay, it did not compress. So now the push rod is too long. If I was driving the car in this position, it would be like someone was holding their foot on the pedal the whole time. So I'm going to loosen it up. Compress. Okay. Does it compress? Yes. Okay. Go just a little bit more. Now I'm going to tighten the lock nut. Now the system is bled. We do have reserve travel. So when the pedal comes up off the floor, the clutch is still not engaged. That's good. That's a good sign. Now, recommendation on how to do this at home. If you're doing this as a do-it-yourselfer, we started off by filling the master cylinder using a pushback technique and pushed a lot of air up and out of the system. But that didn't get it bled. So we changed and we just tried pump, hold, kind of traditional brake bleeding and that really was not effective. What finally became effective was blocking the slave cylinder, blocking the fork against the housing. We're not trying to use a lot of force here, we're just using enough pedal pressure to flush from the top down. As soon as we started flushing from the top down rather than just the little bit of fluid movement that the slave cylinder creates when we were holding the pedal down, the system started to come to life and in probably just a few cycles, we got a working system out of it. If you happen to have a vacuum bleeding system or a reverse fluid injection system, this would be a good candidate for those tools also. Well, the clutch and the clutch hydraulic system installation on the Nissan 300ZX is all done. Got a good pedal feel, it's easier to push now than it was, and we've got good reserve travel, so we got a good clutch. Now this car was purchased as a demo with about 4,000 miles on it, now has 103 and change. The original owner has always believed that it was the original clutch because he bought it at such low mileage. As soon as I took the transmission out, I saw something on the flywheel, took a closer look at the disc, the cover, the flywheel, it's clear. This clutch had already been replaced before he bought the car. So in less than 4,000 miles, as a demo, somebody ruined the clutch in this car. We got the new flywheel, the new clutch, the new hydraulic system, and we had a couple other elements to add to it this time. This is the first time we've pressed off the bearing and pressed it back onto a collar. Went very well. And the pilot bushing. That pilot bushing, you can only lubricate it with 
motor oil, no wheel bearing grease. If you have any questions about a clutch installation, a hydraulic system, or a flywheel for a passenger car or a pickup truck, please feel free to call Perfection's toll-free tech support hotline.